if you are fat, overweight, or obese, is there a chance that you are still healthy? Or is it always the case that being overweight or obese is a big health risk, especially for heart attack and stroke? I often encounter this question every now and then from my patients and from everyone else. So in this video and podcast, I will answer this question as best as I can. So keep yourself tuned in. Have you heard of this term called MHO or metabolically healthy obese? If you haven't now, you know. So you might ask if there's an MHO, would there also be an MUO or a metabolically unhealthy obese? In answer to that, yes, both MHO and MUO are currently accepted terms in the medical community. But I have to tell you this ahead, there are a whole lot more met metabolically unhealthy overweight or obese individuals as compared to the metabolically healthy ones. Being a metabolically healthy obese refers to a subset of individuals who are classified as obese based on their body mass index but do not exhibit the typical metabolic abnormalities associated with obesity such as elevated blood sugar levels due to insulin resistance, high blood pressure, dyslipidemia or abnormal blood lipid levels, especially that of the triglycerides, and thus are not expected to carry a corresponding increased risk of cardiovascular disease. But first things first, let me explain to you a little bit about this thing called BMI. BMI stands for Body Mass Index. It is a measure of body fat based on a person's weight and height. So to calculate BMI, the weight in kilograms is divided by the square of the height in meters. BMI is commonly used as a screening tool to assess whether an individual has a healthy body weight for their height. It provides a general indication of whether a person is underweight, of normal weight, overweight, or even obese. The categories defined by BMI ranges are as follows. Underweight with a BMI less than 18.5 Normal weight with a BMI between 18.5 and less than 25 Overweight with a BMI between 25 and less than 30 And obese with a BMI 30 or higher While BMI is a useful initial assessment tool, it does have some limitations It may not be accurate for certain individuals such as athletes with high muscle mass or older adults who may have lost muscle mass. However, I will not dwell much about that in this podcast episode. So what is MHO? The concept of metabolically healthy obesity is still a topic of debate among researchers and medical professionals. Traditionally, obesity has been considered a significant risk factor for various metabolic disorders and chronic conditions. However, it has been observed that for a certain subset of these obese individuals, they seem not to develop these metabolic complications. To be classified as metabolically healthy obese, an individual has to have a BMI of 30 and above. Furthermore, that individual should also undergo a comprehensive metabolic assessment, including measurements of blood pressure, fasting glucose, lipid profile, and insulin sensitivity. If these metabolic markers fall within their normal ranges despite having excess body weight, either falling within the category of overweight or obese, that person may be considered to be metabolically healthy, overweight, or obese. So I'm showing you this article published in the journal Endocrine Reviews last June 2020. It has been noted that MHO may be considered given the diagnosis of obesity with a BMI of 30 or higher, as well as the absence of any of the parameters included among the criteria for metabolic syndrome as defined by the American Heart Association and the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute of the United States. So that means they should have first a fasting serum triglyceride of less than 150 milligrams per deciliter, 
and HDL cholesterol of more than 40 mg per deciliter for men and more than 50 mg per deciliter for women. A blood pressure of less than 130 over 85 mm of mercury and a fasting blood sugar of less than 100 mg per deciliter. Also, this patients should have no medications for dyslipidemia, diabetes, or hypertension, as well as no manifestations of cardiovascular disease. In other words, another way of looking at this is that an MHO is somebody who is above his or her normal weight for height, but is not metabolically unhealthy enough to qualify for the criteria of metabolic syndrome. Compared to individuals with metabolically unhealthy obesity or MUO, people with MHO have lower levels of fat in the liver and the viscera or inside the abdominal cavity, and with the fats usually located subcutaneously in the legs. They have greater physical activity and corresponding cardiorespiratory fitness, are still insulin sensitive, have lower inflammatory marker levels such as high sensitivity C-reactive protein or HSCRP, as well as normal adipose tissue function. MHO cannot be just ideally disregarded altogether because from studies, its prevalence seems to be like anywhere between 10 to 30 percent of people, depending on the age and gender. From all indications, it looks like being a metabolically healthy obese most likely is but a transient phenotype and it is still highly indicated for them to aim for weight loss since even though the risk for developing cardiometabolic diseases such as hypertension, heart attack and stroke may be lower compared to a metabolically unhealthy obese, it still is higher compared to lean people who are metabolically healthy. Again, it is important to note that the term metabolically healthy obese does not mean that these individuals are entirely free from health risks. While they may have a lower risk of immediate metabolic complications, they still have an increased likelihood of developing health issues in the long term compared to individuals with normal weight. Furthermore, the criteria and definition of metabolically healthy obesity can vary among studies and the concept remains an area of ongoing research. If you want to learn more about the metabolic syndrome and how the low-carbohydrate diet can be an effective therapeutic intervention to help you address its reversal, I encourage you to visit my Low Carb Health Doctor website at www.lowcarbhealthmd.com you can find many evidence-based resources there. You can do your own learning at your own pace by reading the articles and watching the videos that I have curated to make your journey back to metabolic health much easier. I have recently opened my metabolic telehealth consult coaching platform and to celebrate this milestone, I am offering a limited introductory 25% discount. You just have to type the promo code Fight Metabolic Syndrome upon checkout. Take note the Fight Metabolic Syndrome promo code has no spaces between the three words. Since this will be a one on one session with me, there will be time constraints indeed and limitations of availability. And I only have a limited amount of time to give for this. However, for those who may find it difficult to schedule for this telehealth medical coaching, for those who may not be approved or for those who would prefer not to avail of this platform for whatever reason, I have good news for you. In my website, lowcarbhealthmd.com, I will soon be coming out with the Low Carb Health Doctor eLearn online learning platform where you can avail of online mini courses to help learn your way back to your own metabolic health. Later on, you can also enroll in my Low Carb Health Doctor Metabolic Health Master Course, which is still currently under development as of the time I am recording this podcast. So what is your current body mass index or BMI? 
Are you obese with a BMI of 30 or higher? Or perhaps is it 25 or above and you are already overweight? I suggest you should go figure out what your BMI is. At the very least, it will give you an idea where you are now in terms of your weight and where you are possibly headed to. Then, if you realize that you're already on the upside, or worse, you might already be way far above what is supposed to be your normal weight, then I highly recommend that you do a metabolic workup. Based on statistics, more often than not, you would already be probably metabolically unhealthy. But if it so happens that you find yourself still qualifying for the criteria of being a metabolically healthy obese or an MHO, then I still recommend that you don't take that for granted and instead find a way to lose some weight and if possible to go back to what is ideal for your weight. In this aspect, therapeutic low-carb nutrition would be very helpful. Also watch out for your waistline. You might already be qualifying for abdominal obesity or visceral adiposity based on metabolic syndrome criteria. It would be very helpful if your doctor is aware of the metabolic syndrome as well as the differences between an obese person who is healthy or unhealthy from metabolic criteria. Furthermore, finding a doctor who knows about low-carb, high-healthy fats nutrition would indeed be an added plus. If your doctor seems to be not that much aware of it, then it might perhaps help if you share my YouTube videos and podcasts as well as the lowcarbhealthmd.com website to them and also to your own family and friends. Aside from what I'm doing here, there are also other doctors advocating in this low-carb space and you just have to Google low-carb doctors for that. As Dr. Tim Noakes has said about low-carb nutrition, this is the new medicine which is going to take 30 years to be accepted. But as far as your health is concerned, you better accept it today. You haven't got 30 years to wait for medicine to catch up. So, go like this video and share it with your friends, relatives, and acquaintances. Leave your comments below. Subscribe to my Low Carb Health Doctor YouTube channel and any of my various audio podcast platforms. If you'd like to support my metabolic syndrome awareness advocacy, you can go buy me a coffee through my link in the description below. I certainly would appreciate that gesture a lot. Let's all fight metabolic syndrome and let's go living la vida low carb.